Hi, I'm Derek. Uh, I am PHP 7.4's 7, 7 release manager. That doesn't really much more than me scrambling to get the packages ready every month now. Um, to make sure that there's no bugs crept in and all the unresolved things are being sorted. I spend most of my time working on Xdebug. Uh, it's a debugging tool if you haven't heard of it. Please go check it out. I'm sure it will improve your life a lot. Uh, I do a PHP Internals podcast. We, we are currently on a Christmas break, but uh, hoping to get back to that at the end of January. And this will feature back later in the talk. I like maps, beer and whiskey. And many of the examples that I'll be showing are related to one of these things, or more than one. All right, so on queue, my classes are always an emoji and then a name because code is boring and pictures make things nice, I've heard before. So the, probably the biggest thing in PHP 7.4 is type properties. Since PHP 7.0, typing has crept more and more into PHP. And in 7.4, we finally have type properties. Now, what are type properties? Let's have a look. That's basically, they are normal properties with an extra keyword denoting the type. So in this case, we have int, integer and number for the age of a whiskey, a class distillery, describes the distillery that makes the whiskey, and then an optional property, an optional private property, which is the bottler, the person who puts the whiskey in the bottle. That don't, doesn't always have to be the same people. All the types you can always already use in PHP, you can also use as property type for your properties, except for void, because that's kind of pointless, if you think about it. All right, so you can also set types on static properties. Uh, I haven't actually tried whether the type needs to be after static or whether it's going to be before, so that's something for you to try as homework. Um, and the type properties might have default values, uh, and those can only really be scalar values. They can't really be instantiated objects because that's not an initialization. That is something you do in your constructor. And as last, if you want to apply a type to multiple properties, then you can use the syntax in PHP. However, please don't do that because it's confusing. Does the bool apply to both of them or to one of them? If you don't know, if you can't know for sure, just don't do it. And I don't think any coding standard allows for this either. But the language does. Now, how do they work? Let's have a look back at this script. So we have a class whiskey, which we instantiate, and then we try to echo the value of whiskey h. Anybody wants to guess what this outputs? Uh, okay, I hear, you need to shout loud, I can't hear. Exception. Exception, what else? Zero. Exception is the right answer. Why does it throw exception? Because it's not initialized. It's not initialized, exactly. The initialized state is checked when you read a property, read a type property. If it hasn't been initialized yet, it will make sure that you can't access data that isn't there, right? That's a bit pointless. So in this case, because it hasn't been initialized, it will give that error message upon reading the property. Now, what happens if we are writing it? What are we doing here? So we're setting the distillery to the string Lagavulin instead of the class type distillery. What happens here? Exception. exception, exactly. It gives you a type error. So it's not technically an exception, it's an error, uh, but a similar idea. The type validation is done when writing to a property. In this case, we're writing a string, as it says, but it needs to be an instance of the distillery, and hence you get a type error. All right, what happens here? So I have this integer h property, and I'm setting it as a string value 29. What happens here? I don't hear the shout exception anymore, which is a good thing, because what happens here is that you get the integer 29. So type properties, they don't force you to use a type if your file isn't in strict, strict types mode. Just like type hints would normally work for function arguments. The same rules apply to having type properties like this as well. So in order to make this fail, you actually have the others line, which is declare strict types, and then we try to set an integer, it will succeed, but I made a typo in my slide, so you still get the error message. Right. 
On top of this, there's something else that sort of comes with types in PHP 7.4. And I'm not sure how much of a use this really has, but it is another extension of PHP's type system that is getting more and more developed. So this is the one that's called covariant return types. And what it actually means is that in a method or in a function, you can return a more specific type. So in this case, we have a bakery, if you call baguette on, uh, sorry, if you call gimme on it, bakery makes bread, so you get a bread out of that. A patisserie is a specialized version of a bakery, and in this case, it will only give you baguettes. And that is something you can enforce uh, by inheritance then. So the following does not work. If you flip them the other way around, then it says that a return type on an inherited method cannot, ex cannot return a wider type. That makes sense, right? If you have a method, if you, if you have some code that uses a method, and suddenly you, you take a subclass or some debugging class or something gets wrapped, if that method then would turn a type that your original calling code wouldn't accept, your code might not know what to do with it. So this is the reason why you can't return a, a wider type, but you can return a more specific type. The exact opposite is true for function arguments. So in PHP 7.3 and earlier, function arguments they had to match between calling methods. But in PHP 7.4, they are now called contravariant, which is the exact opposite of covariance, which means that an inherited and overloaded method can now accept a more broader type. You created a class that does more things, so it can take more responsibility of the things that now extra come in into the methods. Which means that the other way, it doesn't work. Contravariant, arguments are contravariant, so it can't accept a more specific type. Okay. Then there's the third one, which is invariant property types. Uh, you can probably guess what that means, but I'll go through this anyway. And this is what is used for properties. Because properties are both read and write, you can't really make the type wider in an inheritance class because depending on where you're reading or writing, your original calling code might not how to deal with the types that it has been set then. So the properties are invariant. They cannot represent a more specific or a more broad type. And when you try to do that, um, you get a fatal error. Interestingly, you don't get an exception, you get a fatal error. Why does this? I don't quite know. All right, so that is probably the biggest thing in PHP 7.4. Now there's a whole bunch of slightly smaller things. Some are boring, some are uninteresting, but I want to go over them anyway. So you're all familiar with assignment operators, the equal sign right, and you have the uh, multiplication assignment operator, which is a, it multiplies the value in angle with what it says behind it. So you convert your angles from degrees to radians or the other way around because my math's never that good. We have the null coalesce operator, which allows you to, um, if the first argument before the question mark, question mark is null, it will then use the default value, which is lovely, but as you can see in this example, which is a contrived example, you still have to spell out the full, the full key, key elements to the data that you're modifying twice, which is kind of annoying. So you can guess what the null coalescing assignment operator is, which is the marriage of both two. Uh, kind of neat. Next one, the spread operator in array expressions. So PHP 7.2, I'm going to guess, the dot 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 operator, or was it PHP 7.3? I don't quite remember, actually. As part of a function argument would mean that if you pass in an array in there, it would, uh, sorry, the other way around, it would collate all the arguments that are being sent beyond that argument into an array. Now, PHP 7.4 answers spread operator in array expression. So in this case, we create an array called apples. We have a red apple and a green apple. And then we have fruits, which is a pear, a peach. Then in the expansion of all the apple elements that we have, uh, a raspberry and a tomato. And when you call implode on this, after already reconstructed this fruits array, you get then what you expect, all these things just as single elements in each other, which is kind of handy, not for fruit salads, but for other things. All right, 
sometimes when you read index arrays, um, PHP will return null and not warn you for this, which is really annoying and frustrating. So what PHP 7 for does, it will give you a boatload of warnings. Every single time you try to access something that is null or a non a non object or sorry a non array or something that implements array object, you get a, a notice. Not sure why my slide says that it's a warning. Maybe this got changed. I don't know. In any case, um, you can now get warned. Of course, what you really need to do is make sure that this, uh, this, this doesn't happen at all, and make sure that you have the right data in your variables. But so it goes. Okay, something that is slightly bigger is something called FFI, that stands for Foreign Function Interfaces. This is experimental, in my opinion, because it is the fastest way to crash PHP. And, you can't do any, and PHP is a language, can't do anything about it. It is a way to directly talk to functions written in C. They can be functions in your standard operating system C library or uh, PHP, internal PHP functions written in C, or things that you load through a shared object library, like some library that nobody's written an extension for, but you still want to make use of it in your PHP application, you can now do that without having to write a PHP extension, if you're really careful and no C. So it is a direct way of talking to C libraries in PHP, it's bundled with 7.4, but it is not enabled by default. I think that is a clever thing to do. Consider it experimental because it will crash. Um, it's, uh, the syntax isn't great, in my opinion, but that's that, and there's no documentation. There's a few examples, but uh, there's not much documentation. All right, so how do you use this? So, say I have a function in C that calculates the position of the sun at a specific point in time. D stands for the point in time, uh, it's defined as a Julian day, I think. I don't, I don't quite remember what this big number is. I think it is mid, midday July 2001 or something like, something like that. It doesn't matter. It's what the algorithm needs. So we have this in parameter. You can see that because that's a double D. I mean, the syntax is pretty much the same as PHP, except that there are these funny star things. And that is PHP's way of being able to return more than one uh, result. So from the specific point in time, you get all these things back, which I don't actually remember what all these things mean. But in order to make use of this, you need to do quite a lot of work to actually call into this from PHP. First of all, you need to load this header file. The header file is like how you usually would, from a C application, uh, know what the interface of all the C function. Now, FFI only supports a very basic version of this, so you can't really use header files that are already created with libraries, but what you do is you make a very short version where you need to define all the types and all the functions, but you can't use macros, in case you're familiar with C. Now, because all of these things is variables data that comes out, you actually have to create variable holders for that, which is what we do here. Like FFI new, double, you need to say the C type here, not the PHP type. And FFI should know all the C types that you can come up with. And then when you call the function, we call the day number, which is my in parameter, and then you call not with just the variable, because that is a double, but because of this funny star, you need to pass in the address, it's a pointer. So hence FFI adder, FFI adder. This is not a very easy way, and it is the most of easiest example that I could come up with. It's also the only example I could f find anywhere in the documentation, so th that's where you have to go up onto. So, this is great, but it isn't very simple. Other big thing in PHP 7.4 is something called preloading. And preloading is a way of making your, your PHP application available in each request without opcache having to do any work at all. So normally what the opcache does, it sees any time a file gets included, it will check whether it's in the cache, then tries to, tries to resolve all the inheritance information, like some of the type checks uh, that I've shown you a bit, little bit early, that has to be done always on runtime in PHP, depending on the order in which you load, load files. Now what opcache allows you to do is cut out that overhead so that 
this doesn't have to be every single time when a request comes in, which is handy if you have a framework that you use all the time. You run one, your PHP application as one framework. Loading your whole framework as a preloaded thing into OP cache means it actually saves quite a lot of time not having to do that. It comes with a problem that if you then want to change one of the files, you have to restart your web server, which isn't great. Uh, you might guess how much time does this actually give you? Uh, one or two percent, depending on what you actually type to do. So it is going to be a little bit of a balance between, is this really important that I squeeze five percent more performance out of my app, but having to do more work if I want to change files? It can work either way, right? Um, so that's what preloading does. You do that by using a PHP INI directive. It's called opcache.preload. That only works if you have opcache uh, enabled. And then you can specify a bootstrap file that loops over all your files and instructs opcache to preload them. So as an example, I know it says then framework here. Oh, sorry. This is how you enable it. Uh, you do opcache enable, which you need to do in order to op uh, enable opcache. Because I'm running this script on the command line, I need to say enable CLI for OP cache as well. And then in the red, you have this preload file that you specify. You can ignore the FFI for now. Uh, once you do this, before the request gets active, sorry, when a web server starts up, PHP will execute this preload.inc file, and that does some magic. It does the following magic. In this case, I'm calling underscore preload, which is a function that I've defined on a specific path. I pick Zen Framework. I don't know why. It's not called Zen Framework anymore since today, as far as I know, or since yesterday. But basically what this file does, it recursively loops over all the files in a directory and then calls op cache compile file with the path that it finds. Now, technically, you could use require or include there, and that would also work, but PHP 7.4 zero and 741 have issues with this and it doesn't work on Windows and it might crash. So please use OP cache compile file uh, because that should not have these problems. Right, so preloading is pretty cool but on its own is kind of useless. FFI is kind of useful but it's also really slow. Anytime with FFI you load this header file, that is a really, really slow operation. But luckily, you can combine these two things. Uh, so you can use both FFI and OP cache in order to have extensions basically written in PHP, preloaded into your web server, where it does all the complex converting between C types and PHP types and analyzing what it does, and having that available in the rest of what you run in your web server. So it's a little bit different what you have to do here. So what I'm done here is you do FFI load, again with the header file, but you need to specify the scope. It is just something that FFI does. You do this in your preload, and then when your web server is up and running, you can, call, you can create a reference to the scope by using FF, FFI scope astro, it's the name I defined here, and then you can call that as previous. So this is kind of useful, and I think in the next few years we'll see people write extensions in PHP using FFI that can be installed through Composer without you having to load any new extensions into PHP, which I think together is actually quite a useful thing to have. Is this as good as writing an extension for PHP itself? Probably not, but also writing extensions in PHP is a whole lot harder than writing them in PHP. So I think we'll see some fun and good things coming out of this in the future. Now we have reflection for references. This was added because Symfony does really weird things and it needs to detect whether something is a reference to something else and this is the only way how to do this now. So in 7.4 seven, district no longer always works. So what you need to do instead is do the following. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of annoying. So we construct this array with three elements here, two starting with 0, 1, and 2. Ref1 is a net new variable that references this array element, 
and Rev2 references this array element, and then we alt another one that references back to number two. So that basically means that both Rev2 and array three both point to the same reference. So both can be considered as the same reference to the same data. And normally in PHP, you cannot know this information without using some tricks which stop working in PHP 7.4, and hence a reflection reference. So how do we get the information about this? Well, you call reflection reference from array element, you specify the variable that is the array, and then your index. Now the reason why you can't use array in between square bracket zero, because the moment if you do that and you pass it to a function, it messes with the references in it, and that defeats the purpose of checking whether it works or not, so you can't do that. And then, if it is a reference, you can get its ID, and if the ID of two references is the same, you know they refer to exactly the same data. So the output of this, I know it's full slightly off the screen. Let me scroll down there. You get the following, right? The first one is R0, we get no because the first thing is not a reference. And then for R1, 2, and 3, for one you get a different ID than for two and three because as you have seen, R2 and R3 are the second and the third element, this one and the one that we create here, and they point back to the same one, and hence they have the same ID. How many of you are going to use this? Probably none of you. <laughs> there is a new custom serialization mechanism in PHP. We already have two. There's a serializable interface and a sleep and wake up magic methods. Both have issues, and instead of fixing the issues, which would mean that your code breaks, we added a new one, which are two new magic methods. They're called serialize and unserialize, and that is basically what should have happened beforehand. How this works, if you, if you specify those on a, on a class, you can guess, when serialize gets called, and the, you, the usual PHP serialize function, it checks whether underscore and serialize is there, and what you need to do there, is return a map or a hash between all the properties that you want to return and the values as an array. Upon unserialize, this gets passed in as an array and you get to pluck, pluck out your elements one by one. With sleep and wake up, you have to return them in a very different way. I think with sleep you return the keys of the things that you want to return. But if you do that, that makes it really difficult if you have nested objects. The serialize and unserialize methods will serialize your whole data structure into one string and it uses back references. So it can't pluck out a specific bit because it's context dependent on bits that come earlier. The new serialization mechanism doesn't have either of these problems. It does mean you have to write a little bit more code, but you can be very clear about what happens when you're serializing and unserializing. And as an example here, slightly bigger one where I have an inherited class. It's a fire, fire has a temperature. Uh, from this class, when I serialize, I want to store the temperature and, when, and I want to unserialize that, I want to set the temperature back. Then I have a star that extends fire, so not only does it have temperature, but it also has the size. Let's go with meters. I'm not sure which object that is, but Google will tell you. And then in serialize, what you can do is you can specify all the properties that you have here. And then for the fire property, you need to have emojis in there clearly, you can call parent serialize to put that data in here. And then when you do unserialize, you do exactly the opposite way to, to well, rehydrate your data. And if you look at what it actually ends up doing, uh, I don't recommend you actually put emojis in these things, but it makes the slide a little bit more colorful. You see that all these things are now in here, as you'd expect. Uh, star has two elements. It has, uh, that's the size, so it has S, which is, oh, that's the name of the, where did it go? This one here? No, where did it go? There. It's this S and the I for the size, and then the second element is fire, which is eight characters. I, apparently emojis are four bytes long, who knew? Um, and then it's an array and it has the S as an embedded object in it. Which kind of makes sense. And I would recommend that if you write new code that only needs to work with PHP 7, 4 and later, uh, you can use this now instead of wake up and sleep. All right, the hash extension in PHP 7, 3, not always enable, available. You need to enable it when you compile PHP, which is annoying because some hosts don't do this. And then you don't have the funky password hash function that PHP has and you all should be using. 
PHP 7.4, it's always enabled and you can't disable it either, which is good news. Yeah, I know it's boring, but... All right, so most of, uh, versions of PHP will also remove data, or sorry, not data, it will remove extensions because they are no longer maintained. So they go the way of the dinosaurs and the other dinosaurs, like when the asteroid hits, I try. Um, so X read code is gone. Recode is a character set conversion library. It's a really, really old one that hasn't been maintained for nearly 20 years. Um, so, and there's a good alternative it's called icons, which does more and better. So that's gone. XWDDX, and if you ever even use that, nope, I have once. It used to be a way of doing XML-like remote procedure calling. It's like a really lightweight SOAP. Um, but everybody uses JSON for this now, and nobody maintains the extension, so that's gone. And then we have the X-Interbase extension, uh, which is now no longer bundled with PHP. Uh, that created some controversies because the PHP development community had voted for this extension to be non unmaintained and moved to uh, the PACL repository, which is a PXP, PXP extension C library. I mean, I might, might have made it up. Which provides you access to Interbase and Firebird. The moment the voting happened, there was a set of developers that was actually apparently maintaining this extension uh, without telling the rest of the PHP development community about this. And um, it still ended up being moved out to the Packle repository because it made it much better for continuous development of something. All right. Now I have no internet, so this slide returns me a image that says nothing. But that's okay. The most important thing is PHP internals.news, which I'm going to plug a little bit. Talking about all the different things that is a new PHP version gets really boring, so I thought what I'd come up with is like, well, I have been doing a podcast for the last half year where I talk to develop the people that actually implement and propose new features to PHP and talk to them about what is in there. So I decided that the second part of the presentation, I will let the people themselves, well, sort of introduce uh, what they have been adding to PHP or attempting to add to PHP. So let's get started with me. I host this. Yeah, that's the most awful photo I could come up with. Oh, actually in my case, it's speaking to me, but I haven't the audio plugged in, so that's fine. This is Nikita Popov. Nikita Popov is probably responsible for 70% of what goes into PHP at the moment. He is um, hired by JetRains from PHP Storm uh, to work on PHP full-time. And as far as I know, he's the only person working full-time paid on PHP now, which is great. You should all be really thankful for Nikita. And he comes up with a lot of stuff, and some of the stuff makes it and some of it doesn't. The first thing that I spoke to him about was saying a string to number comparisons. Yeah, these are all the things that pe trip people up using PHP, right? You compare a string zero to the number zero and that would turn true in PHP 7.4 and earlier. Um, unfortunately, this is not making to PHP 7.4, uh, but instead maybe PHP 8 because the implementation isn't done and we haven't decided on that. I also skip quite a few episodes because we talk about lots of nonsense as well. Episode three, I spoke to Joe Botkins. He is the person that does backup threats and things like that. He proposes weak references thing. And weak reference is kind of an interesting concept. So in PHP, if you create a reference to a variable, or actually you don't even create a, re a reference to a variable, you have say A equals array with 10,000 elements. And then you do B equals A. In PHP, that does not copy the whole array. That's good news. But sometimes when you have a ORM or an ODM uh, where you want to only load the objects from your tables or from your database only once uh, so that you can track which work is done on that, by putting those in a cache is a good way of doing that. However, that prevents PHP itself from cleaning these things up when it decides that there's no normal variable uh, making use of this anymore. But it can't do that because if you put a reference to that in your, in like a big list in your cache, in your PHP application in a big array, then that 
bit of memory can never be cleaned up. So weak reference is a way to solve that. It allows you to make an extra define of a variable, uh, which is what we're doing here. So we have this ghost variable here. So boo is a variable and it has a little ghost in it. It does do nothing. Instead of doing ref equals boo here, I'm doing this weak reference create with the argument in here. And that creates a weak reference, which means that you can access the class and the method by using get on the weak reference. And as long as that returns not null, it has still the original object in memory, so you can call methods on it. Now, if I unset it and then do a varnump of this, you get the null value, and which means you can't call the method clearly. You get a fatal error if you call something on null. Um, but at least PHP can now clean up this bit of memory, which is really useful for these cases where you want to create like a cache map to make sure that you don't end up hitting the database very often. But at the same time, you don't want to prevent PHP from cleaning up the memory when it doesn't need this anymore. So it says boo the first time and then the second time it shows no because we have unset boo here. Short arrow functions is kind of cool. It is a new way of doing closures in PHP with the additional benefit of not having to import all your variables. So in this case, the closure, uh, we create a function with one argument and then the Y is taken in from the outside scope. Now, in 7.4 we have the short closure, which is used, this keyword fn, it's just a short version of function. The arguments are the same as here, but there's no more use. There's no more use because all the variables from the outside scope that this is defined in are automatically available within the closure. Now, at the moment, this closure, this new short closure, can only have a single statement in it. This is likely to get extended in PHP 8 to something more. Um, so it being a normal closure, again, but with the automatic inclusion of the scope in which the closure gets defined to be available inside the closure itself. So that's kind of neat. Um, so it looks like this. I've already mentioned all of these things. And it's it's good for use cases like this, right? We're having something that we call an array filter over a big amount of paths. Previously, you have to create a function, blah, blah, use names, return blah, 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 in array. Whereas in PHP 7.4, you can just call error filter, use the short, short clo closure. The V gets put in here, names gets taken from the outside scope, but here I had to use use. And then if it matches, then we keep the data, because that's what error filter does, it returns it true if it matches, and otherwise it gets discarded, which is a much more concise way of doing this. I think most of the use case for this is in exactly in this sort of situations where you have a very simple method to do with either array filter or array walk or similar things where you need to apply either a filter or something interesting like multiplying everything by pi or converting your radians to degrees or things like that. And for that kind of things, I think the short array function are useful. Right, PHP 7.4 also picks up a little bit more warnings in slightly more useful places. So in PHP 7.3 and earlier, um, this returns slightly different things, which is kind of annoying. Uh, unfortunately, this doesn't make into PHP 7.4, so I have a sad face, because I think cleaning up these things is always useful. Now, what is the result of this line of codes? The answer should be, you should never write code like this. Uh, it returns four, in case you cared. I don't, because PHP 7.4 will now warn you if you don't use parentheses with your ternaries. If you don't use the ternaries, you get this, well, not particularly very read error message, or sorry, deprecation warning. But it tells you, please use parentheses, because in PHP 8, you're going to have to do that anyway, because it will no longer parse anymore. So keep an eye on this. Also, never ever write code like this. What is the output of this? Anyone wants to guess what this shows? I hear sum 37, that is incorrect. Sum three, that is also incorrect. It returns seven. 
Because why? Well, in PHP 7, 3 and earlier, oh, and 4 as well, the dot and the plus have the same precedence, which means that the things are being executed from left to right. So what do we get first? We get a string sum concatenated with 3, and that gets up converted to a string, so we get sum, semi, sum colon space 3. But then we do the plus and all the number. Well, if you do plus with numbers, then the thing on the left-hand side gets converted to an integer. And what is the value, the numerical value of sum colon space 3 is null. And it basically adds a null plus 7, which, as you all should know, is 7. So in PHP 7.4, you get now a deprecation warning. It says the behavior of unparenthesized, unparenthesized, I don't know how to pronounce that, English is silly. Expressions containing both a dot and a plus or minus will change in PHP 8, where the plus or minus will take a higher precedence. So now's the time to go fix your code so that doesn't, you don't hit problems. Now, with this kind of warnings and changes in the language, you never quite know how much code makes use of the old weirdish behavior. So the person that wrote this RFC, Nikita again, he uh, actually analyzed the top thousand projects on GitHub written in PHP and looked at all the code and he found plenty of bugs. Basically, all the locations where he found it in, there were actual bugs. So this is probably a good sign that nobody actually intends to do this without it being inadvertently a bug. This is Sarah. Sarah does lots of things. She has been a P release manager for PHP 7.2, I think, as well. And uh, she, she set out to add some more algorithms to PHP's internal passwording al algorithms. So 2Y, that is bcrypt. Um, it now has argon 2I and argon 2ID, and those are much better ways of hashing passwords, which are now available in PHP 7.4 always, which is good, because they weren't previously. Uh, if you do anything with password hashing, use PHP password, password hash and password verify functions. There's a whole bunch of options that you can set with it. PHP has defaults that should work for you without you having to deal with this, because we focus more on getting the right security settings instead of having really strange one, like register globals. Um, so that's good to have. And please use these with the algorithm uh, that you want to do. You notice that when you verify, you don't have to pass in the algorithm because the algorithm is encoded in the password that comes back. All right, so next thing that Nikita came up with is exceptions in two string functions. In PHP 7.3 and earlier, if you, have a, if you throw an exception in a two string method, you get a fatal error saying method to st explodes to string must not throw an exception called expression. If you do this in PHP 7.4, you still get a fatal error because you now have an uncalled exception, but at least you can throw exceptions from two string methods. Why you might want to do this, I again don't know, but you can. All right, anybody wants to guess what this script outputs? Some kind of error? Some kind of error? No. Zero. Zero? No. Just saying a number would have done the trick. So what actually? Ha what is the output? It's 237. And this is because what it really does, it strips out anything that isn't part of base 16, which in this case the E and the D and ED and hexadecimal is 237. Isn't that great, PHP? Huh? In PHP 7.4, you will now get a deprecation warning saying that invalid characters are passed for attempted conversion. These have been ignored. In PHP 8, it will likely start throwing exceptions, so please pay attention to this. I know in one of my libraries that I use, this is exactly a problem, and I need to go and fix this. All right, an interesting way of representing numbers. So if you see big numbers like this, how many decimal places does it have? It's really hard to see. So what Bishop and Theodore added is, sorry, I couldn't find a photo for Bishop. He has his avatar on it. You can now do things like this. You can add underscores between numbers in numerical constants. Handy for big numbers like this. Uh, 
in the case you have to use that, and which isn't very often. It also works for floats, hexadecimal, hexadecimal octal, and binary numbers. Um, so here we have pi, which is three. I, will, I won't read this out because I'll be here all night. Uh, you can do this for hexadecimals, for permissions where we have octal, and for binary. And for things like binary where you need to set specific flags or something, or hexadecimal where you have logical groups together, I think it sort of makes sense doing it for numbers like this, perhaps not so much. Also, defining pi with a thousand digits is pointless because peach preposition only goes up until about here. But it does parse. What you should never do is use num non numbers as numbers, such as phone numbers. These are not numbers, they are a string of digits. You don't ever do calculations with them. Uh, so they're not used as a numerical context. Same with credit cards. Don't use that either. Also, never hard code your credit card numbers or social security numbers. Um, this advice is probably true even without the underscores because of these things. All right, episode 19, when I spoke with Theodore again, where he ordered a slight deprecation running to PHP, anything with a curly brace now, uh, you can't use for accessing either arrays or strings anymore. Well, you can still do it, but you get this lovely warning uh, on PHP 7.4, you get this lovely warning saying that this is deprecated. Uh, should be easy to check for, you use PHP minus L over all your files and it will tell you that you're doing this, or use things like uh, fan from Etsy, uh, which allows you to check for all of this kind of stuff and so on. So. Episode 20, there's, oh, there's only 84 episodes, so I'll show you, I'm joking, I'm joking. So, Databases have lately gotten some more newer operators, like uh, something to do with JSON operators, in this case, the question mark. Now, in PHP, if you use PDO, prepared queries, use the question mark for uh, well, values that you can, for the parameters, values that you pass in. So, how can you use this new operator with PDO? Well, the answer is you can't. So, I connect. Matteo came up with a way of doing this, which is by using the double colon. Now, that looks stupid, but it is actually something that you see happening in, S in the SQL standard a lot. For escaping a character, you double the character. Um, so hence, this double question mark is actually a single question mark, and this question mark is the value that you have to pass in when you call execute. Nice feature but useful if you use this kind of interesting JSON kind of operators in your database. And this is not only works for Postgres code, works for all the other databases that PDO supports for doing this diff as well. This is all being deprecated in 7.4. I will not go through this whole list. You can do this in your own time. Uh, the slides I'll make available later. Lots of these things you probably have never heard of except for this one, which really caught me out, which says array key exists with objects. Before PHP 7.4, you could actually call array key exists to check whether an object had specific properties, and apparently one of my libraries used that. Uh, so don't do that anymore. You can use is set instead, for example. Anything else in here that's important? I don't think so. So next slide. So when is PHP 7.4 ready? That is an easy answer for once. It already is, got released November 28th. How many of you are already using it? A few hands. How many of you are using it in production? Okay. That is more people? Mm. <laughs> That's confusing. Uh, how many of you are still using PHP 5? <laughs> okay, I'll have to have a word with you later. Please don't use that anymore. It's it's a decade old, it's no longer maintained. PHP 7.0 is no longer maintained. PHP 7.1 is no longer maintained. So you're basically running really old software. Uh, security fixes are not being backported. It's twice as slow, which means you need twice the amount of energy. That's not good for the environment. So please, please, please upgrade. Uh, and while you're at it, why not go to PHP 7.4? Because every 7th version is slightly faster than the previous one. All right, any queries, questions? And is a microphone that are going to be thrown around or not? There's one right there. Is 
needed time to drink some water. Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I have two questions actually. And the first one, um, you said that um, for preloading um, to change the code, you need to restart the PHP process. Yeah. Is there a plan to change it to uh, service reload? Uh, uh, that's pretty much what I meant. Ah, so okay. you need you need to restart PHP FPM, and yeah, as long as can it I reload it instead of restarting. When you do that, it restarts the process, so that should be fun. So yeah, okay. that should work. Uh, and uh, the second question is uh, for serialization. Uh, well, it looks much better now, but it's still the format is uh, some custom PHP form. Yep. Why, why didn't uh, you use JSON for that? JSON doesn't represent all the types that PHP does, so you can't use that. It doesn't use anything more complicated because it doesn't need to use anything more complicated. It is also not a format that you should ever communicate with anybody else. If you want to use JSON, use JSON and use the JSON serialized and unserialized functions with, or magic methods, sorry, interface, which you already can do anyway. So this is basically a format for in, internal PHP usage and not being used for communicating with the outside. So if you can use JSON, JSON serialized and JSON unserialized, if you want to do more, uh, convert it to XML or do something yourself, there's IG binary, there's a whole lot of other things you can use. But the serialization format in PHP is basically what it is because it's always been there and it knows very precisely the exact types that PHP does, which you can't always say for any of the other serialization types. All right. Anything else? Right here. <coughs> On the serialization again. Um, if you're using serialize, underscore, underscore, serialize, and underscore, underscore, unserialize, um, what's the preference against sleep and wake up? What PHP picks, you mean? Yeah. I don't actually know what it does. So if you've got all four of them in the same I class. would assume it picks the newer ones. Right. But I haven't tried it. It's a good okay. thing to try. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, I don't know what's the answer, but I can look it up later. So, come find me. Anything else? It's all the way in the back. No, it's a joke, it's a joke. Okay, if there's nothing left, then, if you scan this QR code, you'll get a link to the slides. Uh, I'll get out of the way, so you can actually scan this. Um, uh, any further questions, uh, come find me later. I'll be hanging out in the, in the pub for a bit. It's across the street. Do you have a slide? Location? Okay, I'll, I'll try to explain. You go out of the door, go left across the street, and that's just around the corner. It's called the... Sir Christopher, Sir Christopher, Christopher Hatton. Hatton. Yes. Or feel free to email me. I am terrible replying to email. So if it's important, just email me again. And that usually gives me a kick in the butt to then actually reply to your emails. If that was everything, thank you very much. I hope this was useful, and I'll see you all later.